Well, good evening and welcome. We're here again for um, Greater Grace of Chester and Asbury Ford uh, with our evening Bible study. Um, welcome in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you are able to see us, please um, leave a little message, just say hello or wave or uh, something or like so that we know that actually uh, you are able to see. We have problems with people being able to see. Uh, what is uh, being shared so it's always good to know that somebody is out there and uh, somebody is watching uh, if you are uh, just let us know uh, we had a, a special time this morning uh, into um, the city of Chester just to um, take the message that we preached this morning same message, same heart um, that um, there is a, a purpose that there is life uh, to all that we do in a moment we'll uh, read uh, a verse and, and share a few thoughts again um, and uh, just if you are finding us for the first time we're an evangelical church we're in Chester um, and we're in the village of Backford for our actual premises so you can Come and join us there on a Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Um, but if you want to join us online, we're online on my Facebook page and also on the GGE Church Facebook page. Um, and these are usually um, 8 o'clock on a Sunday evening and uh, 7.30 on a Wednesday evening. Uh, you can also find us at ggechurch.co.uk and at um, the YouTube channel Greater Grace Evangelical Church out there please subscribe and you will get any of our other broadcasts as they are saved on there usually so tonight we'll do this we'll pray uh, and then we'll read God's Word and um, just see what God does with it um, Heavenly Father we thank you Lord we worship you tonight Lord we thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness for your truth and all your ways thank you for your heart towards us thank you for your strength thank you for your uh, your power within our lives minister life to us now Lord we pray just anoint with your Holy Spirit speak to us through your uh, word by your power Lord by the power of your spirit Lord we are unable to do this without you but we we trust you Lord we seek you and we desire you fill us with your life fill us and anoint us now Lord we pray with your Holy Spirit in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, oh, it's good to see that Mary made it home. Um, and um, yeah, uh, tonight let's uh, think again. Let's read the verse that we read this morning again, which is Proverbs 4.23. And that says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life Heavenly Father we thank you Lord for these words and these thoughts we thank you for the issues of life that are from you Lord thank you Lord that you've given us a heart thank you Lord that you've given us a heart to trust you, to believe you to, to give to you Lord Thank you, Lord, that we have the, the power over our heart to open it, to close it, and uh, to allow you in, to allow other things in, Lord. But we, we pray, Lord, that you'd fill us now. Guide us, help us to guide our hearts, keep them in all diligence, uh, so that the issues that we uh, face the issues of this life are the issues that you put there Lord guide us now we, we pray and fill us with your love and your life and your truth touch those that need a special touch tonight Lord wherever they are be with those that need your healing Lord uh, thank you for your healing on Diane's life as well we pray that you you'd continue to help touch there Lord any others for Jane as well Lord be with her others that need your special touch Lord tonight minister to you uh, our 
hearts now. We pray, strengthen us and quicken us. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, yeah. Just thinking about that, the issues of the heart uh, and the issues of life. We uh, have so many things that come into our lives. Um, there is so much that we have to just trust God for and trust God with. Uh, we don't know the things that are going to crop up, the things that are going to become issues for us. We don't know what is going to become the uh, biggest issue tomorrow. Uh, as yet, as of yet, um, sometimes we think, oh, um, we know um, what the biggest issues will be in the near future. But if we think about this a year ago, um, we had not quite yet gone into lockdown. This week will mark um, exact year, I think, of um, lockdown being imposed for the first time in the UK. And back then, you know, I remember thinking that uh, on the 23rd, where I was the last day I walked out of my job, not realising that I would never actually go back there to work again, uh, thinking that it was only going to be a temporary thing. And you know what? We don't know the issues that we will have to face. We don't know the issues that will come up and this, the things that will suddenly become important to us. A, a government could bring in a law tomorrow that would um, suddenly become a major issue for us um, we've seen that in the last uh, season as well certain things that have been brought in as law in our country and in other countries um, where we thought oh this probably will never be an issue for us it actually has, has brought situations into our lives uh, into our faith to our attention that has made us realise actually this can be an issue and uh, and it's good for us to come back to this verse that we started with this morning um, keep thy heart with all diligence out of it are the issues of life you know uh, there is an issue there is a major issue for everyone and that that issue is sin um, sadly we've seen um, protests over the last uh, few weeks for various things um, protests uh, uh, about uh, uh, violence against women which is very sad we don't condone that we don't agree with that at all uh, protests against racism Again, we don't uh, condone that. We don't. We want, don't want uh, to have anything to do with these things. Uh, protests uh, against other issues. Uh, protests against the government and its handling of the crisis. Uh, various different uh, situations. But you know what the main issue is today? The heart of man. Sin in the heart of man is the major issue that everyone faces. And actually, until the human heart is dealt with, none of these other issues will go away. Only really when a heart is dealt with can we say that, you know, oh, this won't be a problem. And even then, you know, our problems don't disappear completely. But you know what? come to the Lord Jesus Christ and allow him because what's the problem the problem is you know it's sin basically uh, basically people uh, doing things that they desire that are against God's law uh, doing things that are, are they desire and, and pleasing themselves and um, the irony is that man thinks that by legislation and by advising each other and by being a good moral person and maybe even by by exacting that morality that their own sense of morality on other people and imposing their morality on other people but this is the way for a uh, to heal a society whereas actually you know what it's crazy it's insane because the answer for the human heart is the Lord Jesus Christ. The answer for the heart of man 
it, it's not just more rules and, and, and different. Uh, we bring in this policy and we bring in this uh, this thing and everybody needs to do this and we all need we bring it. We need more and more laws uh, to define more and more activity. And you think no, actually, it doesn't work. The issue is the heart of man. And the issue is actually we need this scripture to be taught in every school. We need this scripture to be uh, uh, preached in every pulpit, broadcast in every TV station, uh, printed in every newspaper. Keep thy heart with all diligence. Bring your heart into subjection. Uh, examine yourself, examine your own conscience. Uh, come and, and bring that heart uh, before the living God not before man because this is the thing today it's like well I, I examine my own conscience and my own conscience tells me that I have to be more more of a vegetarian or I have to be more politically correct or I have to be uh, a better Muslim or I have to be uh, whatever it is that, that we put in there or I have to stick to my New Year's resolutions but no actually before the living God before life and death and before the Lord Jesus Christ Christ died for you Christ died for your sin and what does that mean and what is that sin and you know our actions today um, are they are they sinful? Our actions today do they harm others? Do they do, do they um, project self into the atmosphere? Or are we projecting the Lord Jesus Christ? We come and we bring our heart, keep our heart in diligence, and we 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 bring our heart uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ. Pastor Shala mentioned it again today in Baltimore um, that oh there's a mental health crisis in the United States that is bigger than the COVID crisis and I think the same is probably true in this country that uh, there are so many uh, issues going on and this is the thing isn't it issues many many issues I have an issue about this I have an issue with that Keep thy heart in all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. We want to deal with our issues, then deal with our heart. You know, um, in Numbers 6, there's a blessing in verse 24, and it says, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel. And I will bless them. Wow. You know, the... Uh, the psalmist says in Psalm 127, unless the Lord keep the city, they labour in vain. You know, this is the, the unless the Lord build the house, um, the watchman uh, wakes in vain, unless the Lord keeps the city. And you know what? The Lord is the best keeper of anything. Cain's accusation against God is, am I my brother's keeper? Is it up to me to be responsible for somebody else's actions? Am I the, have, I, have I got to look out for somebody else? Well, you know what? Actually, we're called to love our neighbour. And we're called to, uh, to um, honour one another. Yes, we are called to treat others as we want to be treated ourselves. You know, the, the Lord Jesus Christ says these things. And to love uh, our neighbour as ourself, to love our enemies. So yes, actually the answer to Cain really was, yes, you are your brother's keeper. 
not in that you have to you know keep them like a zookeeper feed them and mop them out and things like that or no but uh, not as in the keeper as in uh, I have control over them and I don't let anybody uh, come near them and I, um, I I control their life with my statements and my actions and my paranoia no that's not the point but uh, keeping tabs on them today we were out on outreach um, and you know what that is a, another key thing for us as believers um, we were going to end with that this morning we didn't quite get there um, Jesus we, we started off with that uh, thought that he must needs go uh, through Samaria he wanted to go to see um, the woman at the well why? Because there was a woman who had a need there. Um, a Samaritan woman. A woman who'd had five husbands. Uh, a woman who was rejected by the society. But the Lord Jesus Christ said, no, I must needs go there. And I was just thinking about that um, in Isaiah. When Isaiah was faced with the throne room of heaven in Isaiah chapter 6. Uh, you know, he feels, uh, he, he says, woe is me, for I am unclean and undone. Uh, where is that? Let's have a quick look at that in Isaiah 6. Um, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell amidst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. That's... Uh, in Isaiah 6 chapter, uh, verse 5 um, but then in verse 8 it says also I heard a voice of the Lord saying whom shall I send and who will go for us then said I here am I send me And he said, Go and tell his people. Hear ye indeed, but understand not. See ye indeed, and perceive not. Make the heart of his people fat, and their, make their ears heavy. Shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert and be healed. Wow. Just thinking about that statement for a moment who will go for us who will go who will actually uh, step out in faith who will go to the people who have issues who will deal with people's issues on the street who will um, speak to different ones who will, who will go with the message of the gospel who is going to go we are going to go it's only us who will uh, not even all of us may be called. You know, it's like, well, I don't feel called to go on. Well, don't go on evangelism if you don't feel called. But the Word of God encourages us all to go. In fact, the Lord Jesus Christ said, going into all the world. And it's up to each one of us to find how we are called to share our faith and to find how we can do that. And it may not all be the same. It may not all be the same method. It may not be all the same practice the same habits but you know what it's all the same purpose isn't it what to bring Christ to the nation to bring Christ to the unbeliever to bring healing and life you know what people are dull of understanding their ears are, are, are heavy their hearts are fat in other words they're, they're, they're not open they're not ready to receive they need somebody to go they need someone to go with the word. With the issues of life, they need someone to, to go who will deal with their heart and will uh, instruct them that there is somebody who will keep their heart, who will bless them and keep them, keep their heart with diligence. We can't keep our heart ourselves, can we? We can't. We try to keep it and it gets away from us. 
we try to keep it and it's like oh you know my heart failed me in this area my heart was drawn aside my heart was wicked desperately wicked I didn't even know it but you know what we can place our heart in the care of the Saviour we can give our heart to the Lord Jesus Christ and as we trust him he will keep our heart uh, who will go who will tell them who will go who will share with them the one they need to know who will paint a picture of the precious Savior as he reaches down to earth with nail-pierced hands we used to listen to that song quite a bit a few years back but you know what the message is there isn't it who will go Isaiah said here am I send me he was ready he was willing and he'd been touched by the Lord he'd seen the, th the throne room of heaven he'd seen the purpose of the Lord he'd seen God face to face and he knew the urgency he knew what needed to be done and today, you know what, we were out on outreach and um, we managed to have a few conversations with the various different ones, young people. Uh, some took tracks, some different. We actually bumped into somebody who used to come to our church. <laughs> we saw Heather Alexander, for those of you who know who, who she is, uh, and with a friend of hers, and we had quite a lot of chat with them. Uh, but then we, of the people we, we, we saw, uh, people were actually quite open to take tracts today uh, not always initially but a few but then just before we were leaving uh, my wife went up to this girl who was looking very sad and uh, she uh, was a teenager who actually by all accounts had run away from home and um, we just sat down with her and shared the gospel with her and uh, she said by the end of the conversation she, she said you've saved my life now I don't know whether she understood the gospel whether she got saved or not she didn't say that but apparently she had been considering taking her own life the situation that had gone on and, and you know what we don't know when we go we don't know who we will find we don't know what issues people have you know we we, we all uh, are very good at hiding our issues aren't we we're very good at hiding the issues of life oh I'm fine yes oh no oh no no it's not we put on a brave face we mask uh, the hurt that is there we pretend that the wounds don't matter you know we have a phone call with a family member and they say something that actually deeply hurts us we don't and we pretend that it hasn't bothered us or we you know or somebody says something uh, in the workplace and it really annoys us or it really gets under our skin or maybe we read something online and it makes our blood boil but we said oh, no, no I'm not going to comment mm, no, I won't. and you know what it's like we, are, we we see these things the issues of life come out and and you know how do we deal with them how can we deal with them what is the answer for dealing with them there is only one answer it's the Lord Jesus Christ it's the gospel it's the fact that God sent his son for us that every issue could be dealt with is there an issue that is too big for the Lord Jesus Christ no. is there a sin that cannot be paid for is there an unpardonable sin well the Lord Jesus Christ said yes blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is an unpardonable sin and I remember years ago people coming and saying uh, to the pastor at the time uh, you know Pastor, I, I, I'm worried that I may have committed the impardonable sin. And I remember hearing the answer that the, the fact that you're worried about having committed that sin is probably a sign that you haven't. So don't be too worried about it. 
but the, 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 the thing is when when we we blaspheme against the Holy Spirit when when the Holy Spirit comes to us and entreats us to trust Christ as Savior when the Holy Spirit wants to lift up the Lord Jesus Christ as the only Savior when we reject that and we, we the initiation of the Holy Spirit and we blaspheme it and say ah that's a load of rubbish that's what the the, the Pharisees were doing he casts out demons by the power of demons and it's like wow you know what Jesus was there Jesus was in front of them they were seeing the miracle they were seeing the miracle of the power of God overcoming the power of darkness and yet they wanted nothing of it wow they wanted and they actually rather mocked it they actually rather derided it contradicted it said no nah, this is rubbish oh, I don't believe that oh, no, I, I believe the exact opposite and Jesus said hey that's not going to be forgiven wow so the only real issue with an unpardonable sin is rejection of God's provision attributing what, what God is doing to the devil calling good evil evil good and rejecting the, the provision that, the, that God has made in the person of his son and to be honest yeah that is the unpardonable sin because if somebody constantly and totally completely throughout their entire life rejects the saviour how can we escape if we neglect so great a salvation there is no other choice there is no other option it's the provision of, of Christ as a saviour it is the provision of sins forgiven by the power of the blood it is the provision of a sacrifice made for sin that is the only thing that is the only reality and that is the only option and if we don't take that if we miss it if we reject it if we throw it away or if we scorn it and disdain it then God has no option but to condemn us well I made the provision for you you didn't take it and actually I, I, I did everything I could I laid down my life for you and you wouldn't have it this is the uh, unpardonable sin sorry we're getting a bit uh, heavy there but you know what these are the issues of life and this is the thing we need to go out to this world with the issues of life life and death are in the power of the tongue you know our, our words can express the life of Christ our words can also express death and negativity and sin and degradation our words can bring people down our words can give people false comfort by saying well these things don't matter or our words can express truth that there is a God that uh, the Lord Jesus Christ is going to return that people will stand before God one day and that there is a need for salvation and that there is a need for a saviour and these things are, are need to be said these are, these are the issues of life and these are the things that will keep our heart we focus on them we focus on who God is we focus on what Christ has done our heart will be kept these things are, are urgent we don't know who will who we will meet we don't know what situations will come up but we know this that whatever we face the Lord Jesus Christ will keep us he won't leave us he won't forsake us he's promised not to he's not going anywhere you know uh, we uh, we can 
trust him. We do trust him. We can only trust him. And he gives us the issues of, of life. We, he gives us the issues that are important to him. Suddenly the things that were... Um, suddenly the things that maybe were death were once death to us. The law of the Lord. Oh, you know, let's go. Oh, you know, don't talk to me about religious laws. I don't want to hear them. Why? Because they're death to me. And now suddenly the word of God becomes life to us. Why? Because it, it's his issue. It's no longer my issue. It's his issue. What becomes important to us? Well, you know what? I want to get a, a nice house and a, a family and... and lots of money and friends and have good holidays and, and be well thought of and well liked. These are my issues, my insecurities, my desires. But then suddenly what happens is the issues of life become God's issues. Hey, what about eternity? What about, uh, uh, what about um, life? mankind what about sin what about righteousness what about hope what about truth what about love what about grace you know these are the these are the real issues of life you know and the Lord he will make his face to shine upon us to give us peace you know these are, are the things that will keep us it's the, it's the issues of life the issues that could become when God's issues become my issues and my issues that were once there they suddenly pale into insignificance that's not my problem anymore I'm leaving it in God's hands what are we going to put on well uh, don't worry about it trust God what are we going to do about that situation well we give, we give it to the Lord. We pray about it. doesn't mean to say we don't have problems. We, we pray about them. And we give them to the Lord. And we trust Him. And He takes up the issue. And He gives us a new issue. The issue of souls. Uh, we were talking with somebody. Um, joking with somebody on the street today as well. This person was saying about the, the scrapes they'd got into in this life, and they said, "Oh, I'm a cat. I've got nine lives." And uh, as we were going away, you know, we, it had been a pleasant conversation. Um, this guy said, "Oh, you know, yeah, I'm on to my last life now." So, you know, and as we were walking away, I, God just gave it to me. And I turned to him and I said, "You know what? We have eternal life." You know, whatever happens in the oh, you know, I've, oh, there, this this is going on in my life, and I had this problem, I faced this problem, and I've overcome this problem, and uh, yeah, fine. You know what? We trust Christ. We get given an eternal life, not nine lives like a cat, not um, another chance, not a new chance. I turned over a new leaf. No, we get eternal life. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ promises us when we trust him. And that's the best decision that we can make. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, tonight. We thank you for your faithfulness, your goodness. We thank you, Lord, that we can place our heart in your care under your control that we wouldn't have to even worry about keeping it because you are the God who di diligently keeps our heart and Lord we just think of the issues that we face in this life and our desire is for our issues to become your issues your issues to become our issues so our weaknesses, our fears, our doubts, our insecurities they get given into your hands but your hope your purpose your love for people your desire your truth your gospel 
they become our issues. Who will go for us? We are here on my send me. We trust you, Lord. We're prepared to go for you. Not because we are on a works program to do things, not because, oh, it's the best thing to do, it's a, it's a good thing to do, oh, we should do it. No, but because we love you, and we know that you love us, and we know that there is no other plan without you. There is no other hope without you. But we trust you, and we trust you fully, and we know that if we go in your strength, in your name, then we will have a purpose that is eternal, a purpose that is thriving, successful, full of life. Lord, we pray for uh, our friends in Baltimore. We thank you for Pastor Shala, for the church there. Thank you for Joshua, who was baptized today, Lord, and the other two young men who were baptized with him, Lord. Bless them, we pray. Let each one of them thrive in you, Lord, we pray. Thank you for them. Protect the church there as well, Lord, we pray from attacks from um, the um, states trying to intervene. Lord, protect each one of us as well, Lord. That we would possess our, our vessel, that we would keep our heart, but that we would, uh, we would allow you to keep our heart whatever issues we face, Lord, that we would face them with you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you are the you are the God that puts the real issues in our life. The important issues first. Truth. Salvation. Hope in Christ, Lord. We worship you tonight, Lord. And we ask that you would be with us now. Fill us and use us and take us out this week filled with your issues not our own issues in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and Lord we pray if there is anyone watching now who has never trusted you as Saviour and who doesn't know what it's like to surrender their own issues their own insecurities to you Lord we pray that this would be the time when they say Lord I desire for you to come into my heart I trust you I love you and I need you and I seek you in my life and I give you the, the, the problems, the sins, the failings, my guilt, my shame. I give it to you, Lord. My bad habits, I trust you to, to change them, Lord. My sins can be forgiven because of what the Lord Jesus Christ did for me. Thank you, Lord. Salvation is the biggest issue we face. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, uh, thanks for those who were tuning in. Good to see Zita is there as well. And uh, God bless you guys. And um, we will, uh, God willing, see you again soon. Um, take care and uh, keep trusting. Bye for now.